I was going to say, as usual at these presentations, you have in your head what you're going to say, then you listen to the other talkers and you suddenly think, maybe I'm going to say the wrong thing. And uh, I'm going to quote, uh, I'm going to mainly blame Vladimir because uh, he introduced the idea of dropping the T, uh, whereas uh, what I'm going to talk about is something that has the T. And, and to, to people like me, I think it's fair to say, and educators in general, his question about what constitutes technology is akin to saying, what's the meaning of life? It is a huge question, and none of us know the answer. Uh, however, but what I'm going to talk about is the curricula version of technology as it exists uh, where I live. Uh, where I live, by the way, is, is Northern Ireland, which is one of the four so-called uh, home countries of the United Kingdom. If we take it in terms of size, England would have maybe 60 million, uh, Scotland maybe 5 million. Uh, please don't quote me, I'm, I'm uh, to a certain extent guessing here. Wales, maybe 3 to 4 million. Northern Ireland, where I come from, I think 1.8 million, uh, of which about 300,000 are pupils. So it's a, quite a lot of young people, and we have maybe 800 primary schools, roughly, and about 300-odd post-primary schools. St. Mary's University College is um, situated in Belfast. We are a small, uh, to quote our, our web page, small specialist university college that is academically linked to the, the Queen's University Belfast. We have uh, 1,000, approximately 200 uh, in our small school, uh, undergraduates, uh, of which about 800 are going to go into uh, the education sector as teachers. So that's quite a lot of teachers in proportion to the size of the population. Uh, and they said they go a four-year program. One of the issues that we have uh, uh, that was highlighted too within the, the STIMULA project is this idea of an integrated approach to STEM education. And what does that mean? Uh, well, first of all, the acronym STEM, science, technology, engineering, and maths. And, and the idea is how do we bring that together? How do we, to use Vladimir's term, fuse that together in so far, to make it more meaningful to the pupils? Now, there are various uh, ideas and various theories out there at the minute. And, and one is this one by just Sand Sanders and Wells, who, who the, from their perspective, it's about, it refers to technological, engineering, design-based learning approaches that intentionally, intentionally integrate the concepts and practices of science and or mathematics education with the concepts and practices of technology and engineering education. As we say in Belfast, that's quite a mouthful. It's something that needs to be reflected on. But essentially, I would tend to agree with that. They end up by saying that integrative education may be enhanced through further integration with other school subjects such as languages, social studies, art, etc. So that's where I'm coming from on that. Um, another um, quote from Dixon and Brown, 2012, uh, would say that it's a philosophical underp underpinning of programs that integrate the STEM domains is the learning of concepts in one domain, such as science or technology, uh, that will facilitate the learning of concepts of, in other domains. One serves the other, uh, such as mathematics and engineering. And it, it's that sort of cross-fertilization uh, uh, that, that, that we're trying to get to. Um, what are the challenges? Now, the challenges that I'm talking about here are in post-primary education. I think you're all familiar with it. I think Spain's no different, possibly. I don't, maybe I'm speaking out of turn here. That you go into schools and you have departments, mathematics department, science department, English department, and so on and so forth. And um, that leads to what is termed a silo approach to teaching. teaching. And, and I'll, I'll uh, sort of uh, graphic, or I'll illustrate that in a minute. So that's one issue where teachers are under severe pressure uh, to get pupils through exams. And, and, you know, to a certain extent, we've all been there, and funny enough, we were talking about it today, um, that we have to put the blinkers on, and your main motive is to get the pupils through the exam, and the pupil's main motive is to get through the exam in each subject. So, therefore, there's very little time to, 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 to if you like, uh, cooperate on other issues. There's the school timetable. Uh, which nowadays is pretty much computer-generated, and we have only so many minutes and hours in the day, and that's very strict. And the bell goes, and you've got to move from maths to English or to religious education or whatever. Then there's the poor staff who have to deliver this stuff, and they're only human beings, and they've only got so much energy, etc., etc. And then there's the, the, the pedagogy. I mean, 
you know, how do you teach what it is you wish to teach? And that's a big question. And everybody's got opinions on that. And I'm not saying that I have the, the, the answer to this. I don't. So that's what we would, or could be, uh, seen as the silo approach to teaching. We have the science in one department, the technology in another department, the engineering in another department, and the maths in the other department. And every so often we might wave from the door, but you know, we don't get together. We don't have the time of all those other reasons connected. Whereas, you know, in this idea of fusion, you would think that that, that should be the way. It's, it's one can't exist without the other. People would say, and rightly so, I think that maths is the language of science, technology, and engineering. Without maths, where would we be? But yet, how many of us actually practice that? I, I get the opportunity. What approach, which approach might be suitable? Um, again, uh, I'm introducing the acronym STEM, but that's one theory where we have this sort of Venn diagram approach where we fuse or integrate or allow each other to cross the borders and come together, if you like, team teaching, meet, talk, discuss, how can we make each subject relevant to each other as exists in the real world? So that's one possible theory. Does it reflect what goes on in the real world? I think if you go out into the real world, um, we have a, you will see, I mean, we have brought some students say to Bombardier Engineering, just as one example, an aircraft company in Belfast. They meet every morning from the, the different disciplines. They don't build a plane in isolation. They all get together. And one problem can be affect another. You know, pneumatics can affect hydraulics, can affect, uh, you know, um, the design of the cockpit and so forth and so on. This is what I would call a typical secondary timetable <laughs> that, that we poor teachers are faced with. And you go in the morning and you've got all this stuff going on. Oh, the pupils, should I say, not only the teachers, this is the pupils faced with this. So where in that do we have the time, you know, to actually make the, this happen? It's, it's a problem. Uh, and uh, hence you jump to extracurricular, outside the timetable. But, you know, why should it not be happening inside the timetable? Why does it have to be extracurricular? Should it not be part of the ethos, uh, the way we operate to reflect, you know, what we think is probably um, what happens in the real world? And, and, and the bit about the real world is about authentic pedagogy, uh, and, you know, culturally authentic, personal authentic, making this real. Um, there's staff sensitivities. I have to say this does not reflect, uh, it's not meant to generalize about mathematics teachers, if there are any math teachers here. <laughs> but you do get this, if you like, um, you know, we're all very precious about our subject. And, um, you know, that's it. I, I'm not going to go outside that. This is, this is what I do, you know. Please don't ask me to, 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 to do any more. Um, there are other pedagogical approaches, of course, out there. <laughs> Um, in, in relation to um, what we mean about the integrated approach, um, and we have what's known the, the embedded approach, where it's actually part, it's embedded within the, the school system, leading to either multidisciplinary teaching, which uh, we were at a I was at a conference recently, and uh, that, that, that's actually in vogue in Finland, where they actually have multidisciplinary teaching. You know, they're not isolationist in terms of the subjects, or interdisciplinary. And those two things can mean different things to different people. Um, the multidisciplinary integration approach is about linking content from discrete subjects. You know, if I was a technologist, which allegedly I am, then obviously I would bring maths into what I'm teaching. Why wouldn't I? It can't exist without it. Or I would make connections to science. Again, why wouldn't I? Because, you know, it's, it's normal and the same with engineering. So that's multidisciplinary, but, but everybody would have to be aware of that in the school situation. Then there's the interdisciplinary integration approach, which is more about enabling students to problem solve using the content and skills from the variety of subject fields. And if we look to what Diana was doing there in Phenovum, and <coughs> to a certain extent what other organizations do, it's allowing and enabling pupils to bring the knowledge from the other subjects into solving problems but also to understand that you can't solve every problem. You know, failing to solve a problem is discovery in itself, and it's taking that fear out of it as well, and celebrating, if you like, failure as well as success. Um, and some, some pupils are very scared of, of the STEM or science because they think that they have to get it, they have to solve everything. 
Uh, others would say, no, let's stand back a bit because what you're, what you're actually proposing to do in that multidisciplinary or interdisciplinary approach is a wee bit too much, really. Uh, and therefore, they would say, let's go down the interaction approach, the interaction route. And th that, that relates more to fostering intercurricular links between subjects as opposed to integration. There's, there is a difference. One's more formalized than the other. Um, just to, to link that in to what happened in Stimula, to give you an idea, um, you'll see in the document, this was one project that we could have brought more as a team, I mean, into it, but this was one. And this was for uh, pupils of <coughs> uh, 13 to 14. And what we did was we got very basic materials um, and, you know, they weren't expensive. Uh, the science and the technology people introduced the concept, more the science, introduced the concept of where does electricity come from? This is only one source, of course. Um, how does, you know, we're into magnetism, Fleming's law, magnets, and so forth and so on. Uh, and I'm racing, I'm not going to go into any greater detail, and the kit was there. The technology teacher facilitated the pupils in terms of being able to build this as teams. And I'm conscious, again, of... of um, Vladimir's quote about um, <coughs> focus on equity and cooperation, not choice and competition. So there's no competition in this. This was actually team collaborative learning, if you like. Um, there was no competition at this stage at all. So that they built this, and then to their amazement, um, they either, it either generated no electricity, in which case we had to find out why, uh, because we knew it did work, or it did. And we're only talking about milliamps. But that enabled them then to measure that with a meter and then ask the question, how could we get more out of this by putting another generator in series and so forth and so on. Um, but what we did do then was take them out to an organic farm, which is up on the poster here, and let them see a hydro turbine in action, close up on a farm, linked with a company that installed it. So, if you like, the theory was put into practice, and then that was linked to what happens in reality. And the, the hope was that this would, if you like, complete the circle, join up the dots. Now, um, in terms of uh, the research that we have done, that's uh, immersed in, in Jesus's findings. Um, as a college, then, where do we stand in this? And we have a policy. This is from our strategy document. It says, St. Mary's continues to pursue the further development of the integrative STEM education model, uh, and it also seeks out opportunities to participate in associated re research activity with other institutions, both at a local and international level. Saying it's one thing, doing it's another. So the challenge is, what do we, what do, we do about it? You know, because words are, are fine things. And what did we do? Well, we got involved with Stimula. Um, that's one good thing that we did do. Um, and, you know, we've had a terrific experience in, in the project led by Yossu, Dan Ellen, and his associates. But also, um, we, as a result of Stimula, more or our Stimula provided the stimulus for us to set up what we call the STEM working group. It was a battle, by the way, to try and get staff members together from the science, from the technology, from the ICT, and from the art and design. So we've now got a working group whose sole purpose is to try and come up with a program that, if you like, uh, puts the theory into practice and gives an opportunity to us to try and assess it uh, in terms of research and going out and, and, and what impact would it have. So um, <coughs> this is what we've done, and it's only recent that, it, that it's happened. We've now got a, a STEM research center. It doesn't mean that we've built a new building. It means that we've got a core of people whose purpose is to engage in research on this subject. In actual fact, um, it's extended now from STEM to STEAM. These things drive you crazy, but um, the A in it is art, art and design. Our, our art people were determined to be in there, and as far as we were concerned, why not? You know, it's an acronym at the end of the day. Um, so that's what we're about. I'm not going to go through that ver you know, word for word, but essentially, uh, the first one's probably the most important. Our mission is to effectively promote integration in the areas of science, technology, engineering, and maths within an educational context to improve children's and young people's confidence and competence in STEM. 
And the mission is based on the belief that there is a need to empower school leavers to become both a dynamic and innovative contributors to society through the study and application of STEM. And the other one just elaborates on that a wee bit more. So we believe that it's an ethical responsibility with us as well, uh, if you like, as a social responsibility. And it doesn't have to mean that we want all these pupils to become scientists and engineers and technologists, but at least that they have the opportunity to become more aware, to see that, that you know, they actually own it and, and, and not to be afraid of it, I suppose, at a basic level. And it does bring in the maths and the literacy and numeracy as well. So what we did then was um, <laughs> we talked about the silo approach in, in, in the secondary schools. The primary schools, thank God, are a wee bit more easy to work with because usually we have one teacher uh, with 30 pupils. And providing we can get over the fear factor of that one teacher, there's no departments. They have a more flexible timetable and they have a, what we call a holistic curriculum consisting of all those areas, literacy and numeracy, this is Northern Ireland by the way, mathematics and numeracy, uh, PDMU, which is Program for Developing Mutual Understanding, the Arts. And that one there is significant, the world around this, because that involves science and technology, as well as physical and religious education. So STEM was thought to be particularly relevant to mathematics and numeracy and the world around us in the primary setting, which is ages 4 to 11. Um, so what we did then, on the back of what we have done with STEMULA, was we have developed a smart gear project in, in partnership with an organization pretty much similar to Diana's called Sentinus. And uh, our greatest resource is our students. And our students, the, 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 the graduates, they have actually manufactured all this uh, gear, uh, which is a learning package comprised of um, solar powered cars and um, um, light uh, sensitive uh, fans. Those are two of the, 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 the projects that are involved in it. It has attracted funding from the Department of Education, but uh, our next drive is to try and find out how we can source possible funding for the research into the impact. So that's what we've done up to date. There's a, uh, an example of what the students have created, 500 of these mounted heat-sensitive fans. Um, so it incorporates on the left there, if any of you know a wee bit about electronics, a thermistor, it senses heat, then it drives the fan. These are for primary schools. Um, and the, the children love it. You know, they just think hands-on. And, and there's the light-sensitive car models. A very basic design. Um, and, uh, but they put that together. The children put that together. And then it goes forward. The fact that it actually moves gives them the opportunity to measure distance, uh, time against distance, how far does it take the car to get from A to B, that type of thing. And it's fun, and it, if it's not fun, something's wrong. Then we also try to incorporate ICT. Um, these micro robots, the, the ICT, they don't build it, we build them, for the, that's there for them. And it's drag and drop, just these instructions, you know, to tell this micro robot, turn left, turn right. And it actually empowers them and lets them see that uh, this program, they can control what the buggy does. So. They get a lot of fun out of that racing again. And we have an assault course, which they have to enable the microbot to go around this assault course. If you think of a Formula One racing track, it's that type of idea. But it's not scary because it's just drag and drop. Our Minister of Education, like all politicians, if he sees something that he thinks working well, he wants to get in the picture. So this is our present Minister of Education. And that was his <laughs> Mr. John O'Dowd. And uh, there he is with the youngsters. We had a, a show like you did with the, the, a celebration day, we call it, and the children display their work. And politicians like to be seen with children. And um, they, he you know, gives them great praise and so forth. And it doesn't do him any harm as well, or either. So everything, as I said, is built by the, the students. That's the great thing about it. And from the student teacher's perspective, then, it enables us to let them see through the eyes of the children how much this can actually either work or not work. I mean, you know, we're not saying it's foolproof, but at least they can reflect on it critically and, and, and say they've had that experience. So it empowers the, the student teachers and it empowers the pupils as well. Uh, we work with two other, uh, John Millis University College and the University of Ulster. So we're, there's 90 primary schools, about 2,000 pupils, and 90 undergraduates. And um, 
and that's where we're at at the minute. And uh, we hope to, to continue with that and try and develop it. And um, there's no doubt, absolutely no doubt, that working with partners in Europe, not because we get to nice places alone, like Zaragoza and, and other places, but it genuinely does enable you to, to see and hear and listen and reflect on what other countries are doing. And I think we can learn a lot from each other. We certainly have. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kiran. Uh, any question? I have one. I have one question. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it was uh, um, uh, very interesting to me that uh, the results of the of our questionnaires indicate that um, it, the the pupils in Northern Ireland are among the most interested in in science. Uh, I was connecting this idea with the the point that. Uh, well, nowadays everybody is saying that uh, something is happening in, in Belfast and in Northern Ireland and uh, the region is developing quite fast. You think you are going to stimulate uh, puppies for uh, having science and technology careers or will have a problem like the, the one in Germany that uh, companies uh, must be interested in, in having more pupils uh, becoming uh, students of, of science and technology degrees, or what's your, your vision of this? Well, the vision and the reality are two different things. I think in terms of the reality, we don't have the evidence, so we get to seek out the evidence. Our vision is to try and join up the dots, you know, to make the, the higher education uh, establishments and local industry, if we can get it, and government, and ourselves, sort of have a relationship that makes it feed into, the, for the benefit of the pupils. So that's the vision. And as you well know, that, that, that's not easy. So that's where we're at. So we have the vision, we have the enthusiasm, we don't have the evidence, but we think we have the, we, we would like to be able to go out and find it. So that's really where we're at. Okay, any other question? Two questions. The first one is, uh, your the the smart gear project is being made by your students wh who are future teachers yes uh, have you got any plans to retrain actual teachers to include uh, integrated stem projects in their curriculum what well, I probably should have said that that as well as training the undergraduates, we bring in the teachers from those schools and train them up. Um, but in terms of um, uh, professional development, or CPD as we call it, um, that would be, if we had the funding from the department, uh, everything is sort of, uh, in Northern Ireland, everything's moving at the minute and, and nobody knows in which direction. So the, the, the reality is that we would be more than keen to see that happen and us being part of delivering that to schools. But, but the reality is that that's dependent on the Department of Education. But yeah. as far as the project goes, we bring in those, those school teachers so that they can feel comfortable. It's absolutely essential. And funny enough, the, the students then work with the teachers as well. Yeah. So there's not a nice relationship. And the second question I have is, um, when you're thinking about integrating s STEM skills, how do you consider uh, the risk of not complying with the curriculum criteria? Yeah, well, it's a very good question. Uh, in actual fact, um, in terms of the primary situ school situation and that's the um, Smart Gear project, uh, it does fit in with the, the curriculum, but it enriches it. It goes a wee bit beyond it, but it, it all depends on the individual pupil, the individual teacher, as to how far that develops. But it, it fits in with the literacy and numeracy because we're talking about developing a technological vocabulary. Um, you know, so it, it does fit in. The interesting thing is for us, and again, it's down to whether we had the, the wherewithal to do it, is what impact does that have when they go into the next stage of their education? Does it carry through? So that's another issue. Uh, 
thank you. It was really it's very, very interesting what you're doing. Uh, and it is a visionary. I mean, it's a clearly a good vision. Um, you, you mentioned then, so the next step is to evaluate it, so to find the evidence. So it will be you're comparing those who are exposed uh, to groups of school kids who are not and see what happens by the age of 15. Is this how it works? Well, that's a very obviously a very good question. The answer to that is um, we have yet to sit down and work out the strategy of how we evaluate it. You've, now, there, there's two scenarios that are possible. One is that within the school there are two classes, a P6, you know, P, let's say P6, and one class participates and one doesn't. And we, we follow the same track of before and after in terms of evaluating it. Uh, there's obviously an ethical issue there and we would have to you know, deal with that. Um, the other issue about, uh, now this is over a period of eight weeks, so it's quite a substantial period of time, whether or not then that has an effect on the pupils thinking when they go to post-primary, that would be a different uh, set of criteria again. So we have yet, as a group, to really get refine that as to how we're going to go about it. But we see it as a golden opportunity to do that. And if we didn't, we'd miss the boat. <laughs> Good morning. Morning. Um, morning. I think it's very interesting uh, your uh, holistic perspective, and um, um, for my interest, um, I have a question: How do you integrate the, the art or design uh, on your project? Because uh, I've seen there are uh, some models of the uh, QR project um, that uh, seems like. Uh, um, three-dimension uh, print that uh, now is very interesting for uh, uh, the artists and designers and um, um, in uh, connection with technology. So, okay. um, thank you. Very good question, and uh, one of which I'll try to give, t I'll give two quick answers. Uh, the title of that project was called Smart Gear, you noticed? And this is the third. I, I, I didn't include it in it because I didn't think it of time. But it was called Smart Gear deliberately, and because at the end of it, the children had to take the technology, that is to say the sensors, and incorporate them into clothes. Smart Gear, you know? So you, at, the, at the end of that presentation day, you had children who had sort of coats that had sensors on that would tell them when it was going to rain and pull up their hood. So they, the, the, if you like the art and the design, and the art and design, how do you define that? The other aspect of it is the design of the cars. Do you know what I mean? The aesthetic beauty of the cars. So that's another development side of it that we hope to take further. But we're taking it slowly and surely. But, but art and design, I mean, you know, have a big, and then you've got biometrics, you know. So slowly but surely, we're trying to build up, if you like, um, not just a, a single way of approaching this, but to give a, 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 wide, a wider approach that incorporates all those disciplines. Does that answer you? I hope that answers your question. <laughs> I, I want to thank uh, Kiran and all the speakers of this morning.